an opening statement. Yes, I do. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, we will show that Mr. Devlin has a serious marijuana problem, that he's refused to deal with his financial problems in a responsible fashion, and that he's engaged in several acts of adultery with teenage girls. We ask for a decree of divorce on the grounds of mental cruelty and adultery. We ask for three quarters of the marital assets, the lakefront home, and $300 a month in spousal support. Thank you. Mr. Steele, do you desire to uh, reserve your opening statement or make it now? I'll make it now, Your Honor. All Thank right. you. This marriage suffered from two fatal flaws. The wife cheated on her husband, and the wife nagged and criticized him incessantly. I will prove these two elements in requesting a divorce on the grounds of adultery and mental cruelty. We request that we be able to keep the lakefront home and have an equal division of the remaining assets. Mr. Kane, call your first witness. I call Katie Devlin. Step forward, please. About to testify is the plaintiff, Katie Devlin. Mrs. Devlin, a lifeguard at the exclusive Marina Club, claims that her husband, a pool cleaner, has a marijuana dependency and, in addition, has been having affairs with teenage girls whom he meets through his work. I do. All right, let me hear from the plaintiff. Uh, Ms. Devlin, I take it you first met your husband at a surfing competition, is that right? Yes, ten years ago when I was vacationing in Hawaii. I went there to meet cute guys. That's all I thought about back then. After I spotted Mark riding the biggest wave I'd ever seen, I invited him to a luau, and we saw each other every day and until I had to go home. Did you continue to see Mark after your return from Hawaii? Yes, but, Mo but Mark smoked marijuana constantly. I, you know, some people can smoke pot and they're fine. Mrs. Devlin, I disagree, but go ahead. Well, you're right, because it didn't agree with Mark. It really ruined him. And I couldn't accept that, so I, I had to break it off. And then, four years later, I ran into Mark at the lake, and I was really glad to see him. He swore that he gave up smoking pot when he, when he gave up surfing. So we dated for a few months, and then we decided to take the leap. Could you tell us something about your husband's behavior during the first years of your marriage? Well, he was fine until our third wedding anniversary. I went to a restaurant, and I waited there for Mark for an hour. And he never showed up, so I went home, and Mark was there stoned with his disgusting friends, and he was standing on the furniture and, and pretending that he was on waves and, and shouting. And so I just left. I couldn't take it. So later that night, I went over to a friend's house, Les Tanner, and uh, we wound up in bed together. I know that just made things worse. Of course. So how did you handle the situation? Well, I came home later that night, and I told Mark everything. He forgave me. And he admitted that he had screwed up, and he swore he was going to change. He talked about how he was going to start up his own pool cleaning business. And he asked me if I'd set up a loan with some of the bankers from the club that I, that I knew there. Well, I did that. Mark showed up stone, and he, he just ruined the whole thing. He blew the whole thing. How did you first learn of your husband's infidelity? Last year, Mark started getting all these phone calls from girls. He told me that they were people making pool cleaning appointments for their parents. And then one day, I took two of the Perry kids home from the club. Mark's truck was parked outside the house. So I went around to the pool to see him. He wasn't there. It was just bathing suit draped over a chair and his underwear over a chair. Did you finally find him? Yes. I heard Mark laughing inside the house. So I opened one of the bedroom doors. And there he was. He was stretched out naked on the bed with 18-year-old Chrissy Perry. She was riding him like a bronco. I, I, didn't, I didn't stay around. I, I went home, and, and then when Mark came home later, he was laughing about how he had been cheating all along with these little teenage girls. Now, I tried to make this marriage work, but Mark was just hopeless. No further questions, Your Honor. Cross-examination. Thank you. Mrs. Devlin, wasn't your sex life a failure because you constantly nagged and criticized your husband? If I ever criticized Mark, it was for coming to bed stoned. Mrs. Devlin, did you ever actually see your husband smoking marijuana? No, but I came home plenty of times when that house was full of reefer smoke. At the club meeting with the bankers, didn't your husband turn down the backing money because he knew it was coming from Les Tanner? Les was not my lover. He really wanted to help Mark. After you slept with Les Tanner, didn't you sleep with many other wealthy men from the club, including uh, Tony Lopato? I was never unfaithful to Mark after that first time. Didn't you tell your husband that if he didn't make enough money to keep you satisfied, that you would find somebody who could? No, 
know. I only told him he could try harder. I gave him every opportunity to make something of his life and to get a business going. Wasn't it the very next day that you brought home a Jeep telling your husband, look at what the guys brought me from the club for, for servicing them? No, that was an old Jeep. It didn't even have a top on it. I got that from being the best lifeguard, and they all pitched in for it. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, you may step down. Let me see counsel here. While well, Mrs. Devlin leaves the stand, we have time for a break. Three Guys Plumbing. The clogs at their worst. Oh, it's for you. Liquid Plumber is the plumber to call first. No other drain opener cuts through standing water to clear out tough hair clogs better. For clogs at their worst. Liquid Plumber. Never heard of them. Ever hear of them? Oh, liquid Plumber there. first. The cleanser Dave uses to clean his grimy gas station sink is the same cleanser Mary relies on to gently clean her fine porcelain wash basin. Now, what cleanser cleans that powerfully but without harsh scratching? Soft scrub liquid cleanser with its unique mild abrasive formula. From Clorox, of course. If you think the two best-selling spray cleaners are alike, you're in for a big surprise. There's really a big difference. One's been improved by adding a powerful, fast-acting grease dissolver that no other spray has. New, improved Formula 409 spray cleaner. Big difference, big improvement. The owner of this car was killed by a drunk driver. Insurance companies represent their policyholders, not the victim's family. The law offices of Leonard W. Moen are experienced in handling death cases. They will represent the victim's family, not the insurance company. This happens to someone you love. Protect your legal rights. Call the law offices of Leonard W. Moen, 1-800-433-4433. See these? They're all Colombian coffee beans on their way to America. Picked by hand, they're like no other beans in the world. That's why Hills Brothers is introducing new 100% Colombian coffee, so you can enjoy the flavor of this most unique bean. Yes, they're all going to America, but only these are going to Hills Brothers. You know how picky we are. New 100% we return now to divorce court. About to testify on behalf of Katie Devlin is Greg Hudson, the assistant lifeguard at the Marina Club. All right, let me hear from this witness. Mr. Hudson, will you tell us how you're acquainted with the Devlins? Katie's kind of my boss at work, plus she's a good friend of mine, too. Now, Mark used to be a friend of mine, too, till I saw how badly he treated Katie. Would you tell us about the rather bizarre incident you witnessed at the Devlin home? I drove Katie home from work one day and saw a cloud of black smoke pouring out of the house. Mark was passed out in the living room floor, Surfing USA was blasting from the stereo, and there were half-smoked joints all over the place. Now, the smoke was coming from some mar marijuana brownies that were burning in the kitchen. The whole house almost went up in smoke. And what was Mrs. Devlin's reaction? Well, Katie tried to wake Mark up, and then we went in to look at all the damage. Well, Mark did wake, and he started laughing. And then Katie started crying, and then Mark started yelling at her for bumming him out. I felt very sorry for Katie. Did you have any further encounters with Mr. Devlin? Yeah, Mark called me up one day to discuss a business proposition. He said that he was sleeping with all these chicks, the teenage daughters of his clients. But now that the mothers wanted in on it, he wanted me to handle the overflow. I couldn't believe what a sleazebag he was. I told him to stuff it. No further questions, Your Honor. Cross-examination. Mr. Hudson, didn't Mr. Devlin really pass out during that fire from smoke inhalation and not from the effects of uh, marijuana? He was stoned. It was obvious. I have here Mr. Devlin's hospital reports, which indicate uh, they've previously been marked defendants A, B, and C, which indicate that they found no traces of drugs, just smoke inhalation. How do you explain that? I don't know about that. I just know how Mark is. In fact, all you do know for sure is that Mrs. Devlin told you that Mr. Devlin smoked pot. It was pretty obvious that he smoked from the way he was always acting. Has Mrs. Devlin offered her body to you in exchange for your testimony today? That's ridiculous. I'm testifying because he's a creep. No further questions. Or well, you may step down. Call your next witness, please. Uh, no further witnesses, Your Honor. Ms. Steele, call your first witness. I call Mark Devlin. Step forward, please. Now taking the stand is Mark Devlin, the defendant. Mr. Devlin is employed with a pool maintenance company and was once an amateur surfing champion. His wife has accused him of having a marijuana dependency and of having affairs with his client's teenage daughters. All right, let me hear from the defendant. 
Mr. Devlin, when did the problems begin with your relationship? Three years ago, when Katie started working at the Marina Club, that's when she started comparing me to all the rich guys she met there. All of a sudden, I was a bum. I wasn't good enough for her anymore. Did you try to talk to your wife about her constant nagging? Oh, yes. She said that she was tired of me uh, being immature, so I decided to clean my act up. Bought really straight clothes. I cut my hair. Katie seemed really pleased. She uh, said she'd help find some in backers to start my own business. I was really psyched about having my own business and being my own boss. Did she follow through on this offer? Oh, yeah, she followed through all right, but her idea of soliciting backers was to do it on her back. It was the night before our anniversary. I came home early. I heard Katie's sitar tape playing in the bedroom, the one that she always put on to get her in the mood. And there she was with Les Tanner, and they weren't exactly meditating. I was so mad that I chased Tanner down the block and only forgave Katie after she told me that it would never happen again. She promised me. How was your marriage after that? It was okay for a while. Then I went to the club again. There she was with Les Tanner. They were in the club's jacuzzi and he had his hands all over where a bathing suit should have been. I was so mad I locked her out that night. Why didn't you file for divorce then? Because the next day Katie came home, she threw her arms around me and she took me to bed. She said her eyes had finally been opened, that Les was a creep and that his bucks didn't mean anything to her anymore. I know she'd said this before, but this time I thought that she really meant it. Did she change her tune again? Oh, yeah. A couple of weeks later, I started working for Tony Lopato. Katie said that she was dying to meet him and I wanted to make her happy. So I asked him if I could uh, bring my wife along and help clean this pool. So he agreed. What happened when you got to Mr. Lopato's? Well, as soon as she met him, she invited herself in for a drink. When I finished cleaning the pool, the butler came and he told me that Katie and Lopato were occupied and that I was to leave. He closed the door in my face. I started looking through the windows. Through Lopato's library window, I saw Katie standing there naked, doing things with him that I'd never ever done with her in my life. Did she return home? No, she didn't come home that night or the next day, and then I got the divorce papers. I don't think she ever really ever loved me at all. I was just the guy that she came to in between affairs. No further Makes me questions. feel sick when I think of how she used me. That's all, Your Honor. Cross-examination. Uh, Miss Devlin, that day at Tony Lopato's, is it a fact that if you were capable of seeing anything, the only thing you did see was your wife talking with a Mr. Lopato in the study? The way she was situated, I don't think she could be doing very much talking. The fact is, isn't it, Mr. Devlin, you were so stoned, you don't know what you no, saw. No, that's not the truth. I know what I saw, and I do not use that stuff anymore. Come, come, Mr. Devlin. You know very well, don't you, that your wife reluctantly had you fired from the club because you persisted in smoking marijuana. That's not the reason. She had me fired because she didn't want me interfering with her affairs. Do you deny that you were high on marijuana the day you came into the club restaurant, dropped your pants, and mooned the diners? I was angry. They told me that I wasn't dressed properly. I mean, I, I was not stoned, though. As you say, Mr. Devlin. Mr. Devlin, how often would you estimate you clean your clients' pools in a, in a normal month? About once a week. Now, Mr. Devlin, I have here receipts from last year, uh, numbers 1 to 35, Your Honor. These show that you have been working at these homes for as many as three to four days a week. How do you account for that? Well, I stop by during the week to check the water, clean the filters, little jobs like that. How diligent of you, Mr. Devlin. The fact is, isn't it, that instead of serving your clients' pools, you're servicing their daughter. That is not the truth. I've never, I've never cheated on her once in my life. Is that so? I, I happen to have here, Mr. Devlin, a quote from a letter that your wife discovered from one of these girls, a certain Chrissy Perry. Miss Perry writes, I'm so hot for your body, Mark. I I'm sure there's a perfectly innocent explanation for Chrissy that. Chrissy Perry has a teenage crush on me. Nothing happened whatsoever. I mean, my God, we even laughed about it. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, you may step down. As Call Mr. Next. Devlin leaves the stand, we have time for a short break. See these? They're all Colombian coffee beans on their way to America. Picked by hand, they're like no other beans in the world. That's why Hills Brothers is introducing new 100% Colombian coffee. So you can enjoy the flavor of this most unique bean. Yes, they're all going to America. But only these are going to Hills Brothers. You know how picky we are. New 100% Colombian coffee. Hooey! All my friends are yuppies. Yep. 
Yep. Yep. But I'm just a nopey. They all have VCRs, come here all the time, trade video cassettes. I don't want to be a nopey. I want to be a yuppie. But how can I get a VCR? Rent them on the double with no trouble from prime time rentals. Now, I'm a yuppie, too. Thomas, did you rent your VCR from prime time rentals? Yep. KSD Washington's Movies in April will bring chills, thrills, and spills. See five of Hollywood's leading men and three big nights of leaders in crime. Walter Matthau turns over a new leaf. Billy Crystal shares some human feelings. Don Adams gets smart, and Jack Lemmon plays dumb. See how they made Superman and who made the Super Band. Merciful heavens, will there never be a respite? Not when you make KSD Washington your choice for great movies. These are the faces of success. Their careers are starting at the Art Institute. You work much harder at the Art Institute, but it's a lot more satisfying. When I saw the work of the other students at the Art Institute, I was very impressed, and I knew that that was for me. You improve quarter by quarter. It's amazing how much you improve. The Art Institute and me, we're going to be successful. We'll help you choose the program that's best suited to your talents and career goals. Call us toll-free, 800-292-1100. Call now, 800-292-1100. We return now to divorce court, about to testify on behalf of Mark Devlin as Benny Scaff is a friend. I do. All right, let me hear from this witness. Thank you. How long have you known Mr. Devlin? Yeah, we used to ride waves together when we were teenagers. Mark's the coolest dude I know. His only fault is he hooked up with the wrong chick. Did you ever know Mark to use marijuana? Like, I gotta be honest, right? Right. Well, we used to smoke when we were little dudes. But last couple years, Mark's cleaned up. We went to this party in the valley last year, and, uh, you know, we had a couple of brews. Well, some guy rolled this killer joint and passed it. But Mark said he didn't need that stuff anymore. Did you ever see Mrs. Devlin cheat on her husband? Check it out. I was with Mark that day we found Katie in the jacuzzi with Les Tanner. Well, Kate and, Katie and uh, Mark got in this gnarly fight, and Katie said if she could have fun and make money at it too, she certainly wasn't going home with some janitor like Mark. Well, Mark was so pit, excuse me, mad. I mean, he just split, man. Did you leave with him? Yeah, but I went back to tell her off. I mean, that chick was evil. That's when Les Tanner ordered her into the men's locker room, saying, if I'm going to support you, you got to earn Objection, it. Objection, hearsay. Let's right. sustain that objection and strike that portion of the answer. That's, I went back and saw Les Tanner in the showers, Starco, man, and Katie was soaping him up. It blew me away. Thank you. No further questions. Cross-examination. Scott, you uh, rather resent Mrs. Devlin's keeping Mark from associating with you, don't you? Well, it was an uncool thing for her to do. I mean, Mark's my main dude, you know? Yeah, and, and in fact, you threatened Mrs. Devlin on at least one occasion, telling her you're gonna pay her back someday, so she'd better watch out. I was mad at her about something else. A shoe store I wanted to open. Katie told some bankers I was a bad investment. Didn't you make up this episode about the locker room in order to help your main dude? No way, man. It really happened. Curious, isn't it, that you were the only witness to this incident? Hey, man, anybody can be a witness. I took pictures. I object, Your Honor. Let me see the pictures, please, and I want to see counsel here at the bench. All right, here are three pictures, which are obviously of the plaintiff with some unknown man in uh, a shower. Mr. Steele, do you know anything about those pictures? I have never seen these pictures. May I lay a foundation to admit them? You want to show these to your client? Yes, if I may, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Steele, go ahead. Did you take these photographs? Yeah. Do they accurately depict what you saw that night in the men's locker room? Hey, man, yeah, yeah, photography's kind of a hobby of mine. I got thousands of pictures of naked women. No further questions. Kane, do you have any questions of this witness? No, I have no questions, Your Honor. You may step down. Anything further now from the defendant? Yes, Your Honor, I would like to recall Greg Hudson. Mr. Hudson, step forward. In a surprising turn of events, Mr. Devlin's attorney has recalled Mrs. Devlin's witness to the stand. Apparently, the defendant's attorney feels that Hudson has something to add to his client's case. You are still under oath. Go ahead, Miss Steele. 
Would you please tell the court why you asked to be recalled to the stand? After hearing about those pictures, I began to realize that I was wrong about Katie. She, uh, convinced me to lie here today. Shut up! Stop! He's crazy! Mr. Don't Devlin, Mrs. Him. Devlin, be seated. Now, go ahead. I'm let's sorry, let's finish this hearing. I'm sorry, Judge. I, I couldn't lie in court anymore. Mr. Hudson, have you ever been sexually involved with Mrs. Devlin? Yes. I thought we were in love. But I was at the pool, too, when she went into the men's locker room with Les Tanner. She said they just talked. I'm sorry, Mark. I've been a real jerk. Thank you. No further questions. Cross-examination. Isn't a fact, Mr. Hudson, that you've been hounding Mrs. Devlin, practically begging her to marry you as soon as the divorce became final? Well, yes, I proposed to her, but I didn't have to beg her. And she rejected you. No. She said we were going to be married. Now I know she was just using me. But in the spirit of compassion and forgiveness, you came forward today to testify on Mrs. Devlin's behalf. Well, yes, but she told me what to say. No, Greg, I'm sorry. The fact is, you came here today planning all along to play this two-betty turnaround, no. didn't you? No! I'm telling the truth now. You wouldn't know what the truth is. No objection, Your Honor. Honor. Yes, all right, now, counsel's last remark is stricken from the record. The objection is sustained. You may step down. Anything further now from the defendant? Well, Your Honor, will you admit the photos as D, E, and F? Yes, they're admitted into evidence. Anything further? Thank you, I rest. Anything further than the plaintiff? Nothing further, Your Honor. Let me hear your closing argument. Your Honor, we've established beyond a preponderance Mr. Devlin's drug addiction, he's, his adultery, and his financial irresponsibility. Any independent evidence of wrongdoing on my client's part, except for the incident that was condoned by her husband, comes from the mouth of an admitted perjurer. And the photographs, Your Honor, show no evidence of adultery. We ask for a decree of divorce. We ask for three-quarters of the marital assets, the lakefront home, and $300 a month in spousal support. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Kane. Mr. Steele, let me hear from you now. Thank you, Your Honor. The plaintiff and her witness has, per has given no proof of drug use at all, only circumstantial evidence. In addition, we just had a man admit in open court to committing adultery with the plaintiff here. Admitting that, I believe that the rest of his testimony should be given credence. We request a divorce on the grounds of adultery and mental cruelty, and we request that the defendant be able to keep the lakefront home worth $80,000 and that the remaining assets be equally divided. Thank you. Thank you, Counsel. While Judge Keene considers his decision, we have time for a short break. Quick, quick results. That's what you want from a weight loss program. Now there's one that really works. New Fast Finish, available only at the weight loss clinic. Our Fast Finish clients lose three to four pounds each and every week and keep it off without gimmicks. It's the fastest way to lose weight, start to finish. Call the weight loss clinic nearest you for a free visit. Start fast finish at this special price, only $59. Start fast. Finish faster and thinner. Call now. I don't need that stuff anymore. I don't need duct tape because I never sold any to the ducks. They didn't care, and no one cares except when you're having fun. It shows. That's why I called the Bartending Academy. The Bartending Academy said to me, you want to be with people that are having fun? You want to be with people that like sports? You want to be with people that like to party? The Bartending Academy. That's the number you should call. It'll help your life. It'll help my life. I can't slow down and having so much fun. Call Bartending Academy now. When people buy a Papa Aldo's fresh, ready-to-bake pizza for the first time, they're a little surprised at how much it weighs. That's because a Papa Aldo's pizza has more mouth-watering, fresh ingredients than just about any pizza around. So when you try your first Papa Aldo's ready-to-bake pizza, don't be surprised. Just be prepared. This week, Papa's large pepperoni is on sale for just $4.95. The $4.95 large pepperoni this week at Papa Aldo's. We'll be back with Judge Keene's decision right after these messages. If you had these symptoms, you'd be wise to consult a chiropractor because they get results. Yet often, in the course of an examination, other more serious problems may be discovered. Your chiropractor will explain the scientific basis of your problem, the seriousness, how long it'll take, and how much it'll cost. Then, with your consent, your doctor will provide the quality chiropractic care you choose. Isn't that what a real doctor-patient relationship should be? This message is brought to you by a doctor of chiropractic in your area. When you clean, 
Do you feel like some places are always out of reach? Now Lysol Pine Action has a dual action top. Squeeze the full strength of Lysol Pine Action's deep cleaning formula in hard to get at places where dirt and germs build up. Or the dual action top lets you dilute it for bigger jobs. Lysol Pine Action with a fresh pine scent. It puts every cleaning job within reach. We return now to divorce court where Judge Keene is about to render his decision. Five years ago, it was surfs up for the Devlins. And then they rode that Hawaiian pipeline right into this courtroom, a complete marital wipeout. But from the description that I've heard as to their marital lifestyle, the only question that I've asked myself is why it took five years to wash in here. This marriage seems to me to have had divorce written all over it from the beginning. Mrs. Devlin got into court first with her complaint charging adultery and mental cruelty, and then Mr. Devlin followed with his cross-complaint alleging the same grounds. They could not agree, or they could agree that the marriage was over, but they could not agree on the division of the marital property and thus this sordid hearing. Now, proof of fault has a direct bearing on the division of the marital assets, and that proof of fault must be by a preponderance of the evidence. You know, sometimes the question of witness credibility is a close question, but not in this case. Truth has an interesting way sometimes of coming out, and in this case it was by three photographs, D, E, and F, that graphically substantiated the defendant's case. When Mr. Devlin denies all of his alleged marital, extramarital activities, I'm not sure that I believe him, but I'm also satisfied that I cannot believe anything that I've heard from Mrs. Devlin in this courtroom at this point. Judgment for the defendant on his cross-complaint, the grounds of adultery and mental cruelty. The Devlins have accumulated a five-year, or in five years, a marital estate with a net value of $50,000, with the primary asset being the lakefront home with a $30,000 equity. By awarding that to Mr. Devlin and dividing the balance of the assets, I arrive at an 80%, 20% division in favor of Mr. Devlin. There will be no spousal support for you, Mrs. Devlin. And Mr. Hudson, I will accept your apology, and I will overlook your conduct on the witness stand. This court stands in recess. Divorce court is a dramatization based on cases and issues raised in the family courts of this nation. None of the participants knows the outcome of the case before hearing Judge Keene's decision. The jurisdiction is a combination of laws of all 50 states. Therefore, the laws in your community may differ. The cases are argued by attorneys and presided over by Judge William Keene, who served on the Superior Court of California for 18 years.